Now at 6, the opioid crisis reaching a level of high alert on the streets of South Florida. If we let them continue, they're going to get needles that are dirty. They're going to catch their diseases from that. They're going to die, and they're going to die miserably. Tonight, streets are barricaded while local leaders try to help dozens of people who are homeless and living in an open opioid den. The area we're talking about is traveled by thousands of people every day, but it's happening where you can't see it, underneath the 836 Dolphin Expressway. The Fort Park area is scattered between Northwest 1st and 2nd Avenues between 12th and 14th Street. Now, some officials describe what's happening as an emerging health threat. CBS 4's Joe Murray is there live right now. So, Joan, this is an area in Miami where people live and work, and this is where kids walk to and from school. That's right, very near the Arsh Center, and it's hard to believe that just over our heads is the Dolphin, where thousands and thousands of cars go by every day. But take a look. This is what has unfolded underneath an encampment of sort. Uh, stretching for blocks with everything imaginable, but it has gotten so serious that an action plan has been developed and it is about to be executed. When the sun goes down in Miami, more than a few are lighting up and shooting up underneath the Dolphin 836 Expressway, each one looking for that pleasurable escape and release, if only in their minds. And I had never seen these many people in my life to shoot drugs back in the 60s and 70s. The drug thing wasn't nothing like this. Four streets between Northwest 2nd Avenue and Northwest 1st Avenue have become home to drug users, transients, and the mentally ill. At times you feel unsafe because you never know what's going to happen from you know, minute to the next minute. In recent months, these blocks have emerged as an opioid den where users are openly injecting opioids, powerful painkillers, and shamelessly having sex in broad daylight. It's gotten so bad it's become priority number one for the health department, city, county, and judges. These two teenagers' best friends describe what it's like walking through here to and from school. And I seen this man and this lady. She was on her knees and he was just standing there. And the funny thing about they see me and then they just continue to do it. Just that they're just sitting there just doing it. I feel like uncomfortable. The streets are now the center of a public health investigation into the transmission of hepatitis C and HIV. Two weeks ago, the Florida Department of Health sent this letter to the Miami Police Department warning them that disbursement or relocation of the population will significantly impact our ability to find those individuals and complete our investigation. I am in a position where I can stop people from dying, and that matters to me. John Schmidt, who was once a heroin addict, has walked these streets trying to get users into treatment. Stopping it, putting the brakes on is the first thing they have to do. As you see, the city has blocked off many of the streets around here to try to prevent cars from driving through. But that's only the beginning of the strategy to do something about this opioid crisis. Miami's Homeless Trust Chair Ron Book said they started focusing on solutions back in June after he saw the crisis firsthand. We've got a health problem, and I believe we have finally pulled together all of the various resources in the last week uh, to begin to move folks into treatment. Realistically, many who go into treatment will relapse, but John Schmidt said everyone has a shot at redemption. Nine times out of ten, they know they're physically and mentally ill. If we let them continue, they're going to get needles that are dirty. They're going to catch their diseases from that. They're going to get AIDS. They're going to die. And they're going to die miserably. As we speak, those treatment beds are being identified, at least 50 of them through Jackson Health and other agencies. And I spoke to the city, and they tell me we should start to see some of these people being moved out into treatment by mid next week. In Miami, Joan Murray, CBS 4 News.